Welcome to the Further North Podcast, your weekly dose of the North Melbourne Footy Club. My name is Josh and this is a fan-run podcast doing match previews, reviews and everything North. Let's get it started. So, how you guys doing? Me? I'm fine. I'm totally fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. Stop asking about it. Everything's everything's fine, right? Just tell me it's fine. How about that? The, the game against the Gold Coast Suns has just finished. This is the first time I'm recording a podcast directly after the siren has gone. Um... I haven't had as much time to get my thoughts together. I've written some notes. There's going to be a lot of emotion in this one. Uh, I'm going to try and bring some analysis. I'm going to try and bring some unbiased chat. But, yeah, this one's going to be tough. So strap in. The last thing I'll say before we kick this episode off, Operation Harley Reed is a go. All right, really quickly, um, I'm just going to let you guys know We've got a game against the Saints in a couple of weeks' time, which is on a Sunday at 4.40. Me and the Close to a Flag guys are trying to plan a little meet-up. That's about all we've got to tell you right now. Uh, I know this is a little bit premature, but hopefully we can let you guys know throughout the week and next week. Save the date because we're going to be trying to do a live podcast in the northern suburbs, Um, and then we're going to all make our way down to the game and hopefully all get into Bay 29. And, uh, and start cheering on North. So I know it's hard after this week, but please, uh, that game against the Saints, uh, please, if you can come along, we're going to do a live podcast. We're going to get you guys on the podcast uh, and all the banter will be flying with the closer to a flag guys as well. So that's about all the information we've got right now. But as soon as I know, you'll know, we're going to pick a location, going to do all this sort of stuff and it's going to be pretty sweet. So keep that marked in your calendars. Now we've got to talk about North Melbourne. So, I was hoping for a couple of big changes this week. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think maybe the honeymoon period of the first two games of the season has worn off. We did play, you know, very well against, uh, against the Blues. But, I don't know, the Hawks game, we could sort of like bin that one off. Um Last week's game against the Lions was not good at all, um, but it's the Lions. This was a massive test. In my head, this week was if we lose to the Suns, I'm going to be pretty flat and a lot of the progress I feel like we've put in, maybe I was getting a little bit too on the hype train. But if we won, I think we're well ahead of where I expected us to be. Now, here we are. We've gone down was it nearly 50 points or so? Um, and I'm sort of reining in my expectation for this year, right? So the team gets announced. In is Paul Curtis. In is Aaron Hall. And out are Shields, Hugh Greenwood, and Simkin, obviously, with his injury. Um, wasn't happy with the amount of changes. Wasn't happy. The preview podcast did state this, so I'm not going to go on too much. But I wanted to see Coleman Jones in, and I wanted to just see something change. Well, we've got the same lineup that hasn't been performing with guys in that lineup who haven't been performing. So, positives and negatives from the game. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's not many positives here. There's not many, honestly, to bring. We're going to go to your questions after all this like usual, but watching the game, this is all I could write. And I can only write players' names because as a team, I don't think we did any, anything well, nothing well. Positives, Jaden Stevenson. Really happy with Steve-O. He's really putting in a shift. He converts when he gets chances most of the time. Um, Yeah, he's been fantastic this season. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I'm sorry you've got to play in such an awful team. Um, Goldie. Goldie, especially that first quarter, was the only thing keeping us in that game. Um, His will on the ball, his attack, he was in contests. um, And he hit Steve-O in the pocket, um, which crumbing the back of a pack, Turns out our midfielders can't really do that. But, you know, a two-metre-tall, 35-year-old Ruckman can crumb the back of a pack and hit a target in the forward pocket. 
So well done, Goldie. You're a superstar. And apologies for that awful display for your 300th. And I thought Cunners was pretty good. Um, I thought he had a, you know, a pretty decent display in the midfield, racked up the touches. He was first to the ball a lot of the time. He just didn't have much support around him. Um, but Cunnington, that's a good game, you, you know, just to cement his place in that team. I don't think he was anywhere near being dropped. Let's not overreact. But, um, yeah, Cunners played pretty well. So, yeah, that, that's about all for the positives, honestly. Um, I did sit down for a little bit after the siren and just try and think of a few more. What, what did we do collectively as a team? I think Zebel was fairly solid and he seems to be able to hit a target. Um, Combin competed, took a few good marks, couldn't convert, but they're okay signs. Um, but yeah, that that's about it. Let's be honest. I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it. I'm trying to find a positive, but if there's not going to be one there, I'm not going to make stuff up. So let's get into some negatives from this game. And I know you guys are all going to agree with these. Some really quick dot points. There's nobody around the drop of the ball for us. How many times at a contest did the ball hit the ground and there's just no North players there? There's four Suns all around each side of the ball and they can just string a couple of handballs together and they're gone. Where are all of our players? I don't, I'd don't. i love to just – Fox Footy needs to do an angle just watching the entire ground just so we can see what these guys are doing because I don't know where they are. Um. The, the Suns were walking it down the ground like every single time, especially that first half. Like they, they'd they get the ball, we'd, we'd mess something up, we'd turn it over in the Ford 50 and it'd be a few chip kicks around to shuffle side to side, then one, two, three, four, and they're in their 50. That happened every single time we turned the ball over. Uncontested marks. I just don't understand how nobody is playing on their man in this North Melbourne team. What kind of a zone is Alistair Clarkson thinking he's trying to play because it's not working. And we've said this for a few weeks now and I'm, I'm kind of over it, to be honest. We, we hire this guy. He's got an amazing record and I'm glad he's our coach and I'm sticking with him. But I don't know what he's trying to do with our defense, but stop. Just stop. Get them to play on their, on their man and at least create a contest because teams are absolutely walking it through us at the moment. When we did get a chance, we didn't take it at all. Can you believe that we had the same amount of inside 50s? I think it was 50 to 51 inside 50s for each team. And inside our 50, we had 38% efficiency. That is woeful. Absolutely woeful. I, I'm sick of seeing this team win a clearance and just bomb that ball long. Week after week after week. What were the first two weeks of football? What did they do then that they're not doing now apart from just play okay AFL football? Because it's just reverted and it's gone. It's like we played two weeks of footy and go, yep, that's cool. I'm bored of that now. And they're just thrown that all out the window. I don't see how the rest of these games, maybe the Blues game, which was a decent performance on our end. Other than that, where did that go? The honeymoon period is over, guys, for those first two games. We're smacking down into reality. We'll be lucky to not be last. I know it it hurts to say, and I don't know if I'm just being emotional right now, but wow, we look awful. Even the Hawks today only lost to the Crows by three points. It's wild. We're really getting smacked back to reality here. Um, turnovers in crucial areas. Now, Tom, the turnover pal, um, he needs to be dropped. That was atrocious from him. That was last year, Tom Powell. I liked Tom Powell this preseason and I thought he had a couple of good games going into this year. A young player with some potential. That was a horror show from him. Everything he touched went straight to the other team, running over the ball, getting into a pack and losing it. That was awful from Tom Powell. You got to go back to the twos and find some four, man, because if Paul Curtis does, can, you know, I thought actually Paul Curtis played okay with the little service he got today, but being strong in those one on one contests and whatnot. Hopefully, you can go back to the VFL, uh, Tom Powell, and you know, 
find that form that that preseason and early season form because that was an absolute horror show. We can't deal with any tall forward. It doesn't have to be a good tall forward. It's like 90s or early 2000s era NBA with our team. Shaquille O'Neal is dominating and teams are drafting any player that's tall just so they can collect fouls. It's like all of the fo- of the forwards on the other teams that we play. It doesn't matter if you're Shaquille O'Neal or the guys that were 15th on the roster to try and defend him. If you're tall and you're on the opposition team to North Melbourne, you're kicking a bag. Now, I'm not saying Ben King is bad. He's not. He's got great potential and he's going to be a great forward. But it doesn't seem to matter. How is Ben Mackay not matching up on him shoulder to shoulder every single game and bringing that ball to ground? We've got Griffin Lowe, who I think is a good defender, and the last two weeks has been atrocious. What has happened? The marks, like open players in the Ford 50. We saw it again with turnovers, and there's nobody back to defend. We're all just pushing forward and leaving our man. Why do we trust our players enough not to turn the ball over in the midfield? Because that's idiotic. So, I don't know. If you're above 190 centimetres, you're, you're in for a field day against North because I'm not sure how our defenders can't defend any forward in the league. So, bags will be kicked against us this year. Um, hopefully, Josh Bruce doesn't play against us again because we all know what happened last time. Um, i got another dot point here. My expectations have dropped for this year, win or loss. Now, I wrote this one at halftime. It's, if we won, it's like that West Coast win last year. Did anybody feel good when we beat West Coast last year when they had no players? I didn't. Yeah, it was cool to get a win. That's nice. No. Nah. That was a disgusting performance. And we absolutely, if we won that, we didn't deserve that whatsoever. So I'm trying to find, and maybe I'll sleep on it, and maybe I'll wake up and be a little bit more concise with my thoughts, but my expectations of this year have absolutely plummeted. Bottom four is a lock. Where in that bottom four is yet to be seen. That's as positive as I can be on that. I'm not saying we're finishing last, but Operation Harley Reid needs to start kicking in now. I don't know if I'm joking when I say that too. I know some fans are going to be thinking I'm telling the team to tank. I'm not. I'm not. I'm emotional. Give me a break. I kind of believe it and I kind of don't. So it's all banter, guys. It's all banter. Um, Our midfield got absolutely bullied. We couldn't get our hands on the ball with anything. Like... In the third quarter, I looked at the stats and barely any of our players, I think only Cunners had 20 disposals or higher. Like, we just have nobody around the ball. And when we do, we're just hacking it out of packs. Like, we've got so many players on the field. I don't know if North Melbourne know this. We have exactly the same amount of players on the field as the Gold Coast Suns did. Yet it didn't seem like it, did it? I'd love that wide angle of the ground to see what they're doing because... There must just be two, three, four guys just standing in an open space going, oh, where, where am I meant to be? Oh, the ball's over there. Oh, but it, I'm just resting. What's going on, guys? I'm getting emotional again. My apologies. Um, yeah, that's all my points. That's all my negative points. Uh, I've vented. I'm feeling better. Um, yeah, I don't know, guys. Here I am trying to trying to find positive and negative things to say. Here I am trying to be – I don't want to be all, you know, demoralizing to our team, but I'm sure I feel pretty similar to how all you guys do too. So, yeah, this one has been a, uh, been a tough one. So for the Sean Atley Club champ, I wish I could give no votes, to be honest, for this performance, but um, I've got the 3-2-1. 3-2-1 today, three votes, Cunnington. I think you had the pressure on you when there was literally no other midfielder putting in a shift. You did something and tried something. You just had no support. Cunnington is still a lead at holding people off, shielding the ball, picking it up and dishing it out. You just can't dish it out to trash. So, Cunners, three votes for you. Steve-O, two votes, continuing on his good form, has to be rewarded for that. Um, new haircut. Looks good, mate. Two weeks in a row, new cut. 
two goals. Love it. And Goldie gets one. He was trying to inspire us in those early moments of the game, especially. Um, well done on 300 games, man. But, you know, I'm sorry you had to go through that. You've still got it. You're still a good ruckman. You get one vote from me. So that puts the leaderboard. She's was still on 10, doubling everyone else. Stevenson's got five now. LDU and Logue and Cunnington have four. Larky, Zerha, three, and Zebul, Combin, and Goldie all have one point each. So she's was winning the Sean Atley Club champ, even though I thought he was very quiet today. But Harry Sheasel has a free run in this team this year. Harry Sheasel is a god, and uh, he cannot be criticized. So there's the Sean Atley Club champ uh, votes, guys. Um, question time. Now, I haven't read through many of these yet, so let's see how I filter uh, these as we go. But, yeah, we're recording only an hour after I posted um, that status up. Further North Podcast on Facebook, Further North Pod on Instagram. Every week I ask for your comments. I'm going to be doing the preview pods now, so I'm going to get your thoughts and things like that too. So make sure you get on following those socials. So here we go. James Duke. Defensively, we're terrible. Every touch I saw from Powell was a turnover and in really bad sport spots. Yeah. Really missing Simkin. One positive is Stevenson has really lifted his game this season. He is taking marks, creating uh, pressure, just needs to nail them. Yep, I, I agree with that 100%. Powell, incredibly poor. Turnovers galore, just like last week. Stevenson is one of the only shining lights. So, yeah, I agree with all that, James. Liam Lambert, the honeymoon is officially over and I'll leave it as that. Yep, yeah, I think we're all sort of slowly having that sink in. It's going to happen at different points. This sunk into me at halftime. Um, maybe you guys will wake up tomorrow and realize that too. If you're still being positive and finding positives out of this, guys, you're 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 a, a different sort of human. You know what I mean? Um, Liam also says, the only positive I can find is Paul Curtis's fend-offs. I love a Paul Curtis fend-off. Absolutely. So James Elliott, disgraceful effort to celebrate Goldie. We have gone back to our last year's efforts. Goddamn embarrassing. Turner has to go out and a few others need to think about if they want to play on next year. Is Mackay wanting to play for North? He looks disinterested. I agree, Jason. I thought Mackay looked absent. He doesn't seem to create a contest like he used to. He just didn't look like he cared. And I don't know if that's me overreacting and getting emotional, but I was thinking that while watching. Is that me just being like, we're bad, he's going to leave and I don't want him to leave? Because I don't want him to leave. We know what he's capable of. But he didn't look interested. I couldn't agree more. Um, Andrew Sanford. What happened to North? Makai doesn't look like he wants to be there at all. Yep. Once again, just like Jason. Second that. Hopefully he comes back and, you know, uh, shows us that he wants to be there. Just like some of the other players, you can at least tell that they want to be there and they're trying. But it is what it is at this point. Uh, oh, God. Matthew Hagiliasis. Hopefully I nailed that. Disgusting, embarrassing shambles. These words describe the painful match. Couldn't agree more, mate. Really let Goldstein down in his 300th. Yep. Apologies to Goldie once again. Marcus Gatt. Long-time listener, fourth-time commenter here. Thank you, Marcus. Huge fan. I am feeling quite sad about this. Not sure whether to trust the process and watch us get bent over week in, week out for a lesson or right or right said strongly worded email to Clarko and the gods above. Yes, I did say I'd send a strongly worded email to Clarko. I think I might have to draft that one up now. Um my achy, breaky heart. I hope your heart's okay, Marcus. Look, it depends how we come back next week. Let's try and think about it like that. Max uh, BT again, good uh, regular commenter. Honestly, I just was so bad for Goldie. He deserves better than this mess of a game for his 300. 30 plus hitouts, though not too shabby. I didn't actually look at the hitout stats. Classic Goldie. Goldie does what Goldie does. You know, he's a loyal man, and we should build the statue now. Aaron Ann, when we did lower our eyes to go inside 50, um, we had our, our forwards playing in front on the lead. 
the play looked decent. Yeah, I, I, the couple of times we actually did try and hit a target, I agree. Our issue seems to be linking play and getting that clean kick mark transition from the D50. A lot of hack slash chaos kicking tonight, like the last few weeks as well, but that's likely on the back of a lack of preparation for the ball. I thought Steve had played well. We could all use some practice in front of goal though. Yeah, absolutely. Good learning curve against our bogey side. Things will click eventually. Patience, Ruse fans. Aaron, there's some of the words we hopefully needed to hear. I'm going to read that comment uh, again and again and again tonight so I don't cry myself to sleep. Thank you for bringing the positive energy. Um, <laughs> Mordecai Rigby. I love a good gaslight. Yeah, North are gaslighting us. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Jackson Bates. Aaron Hall is the worst player on our list. Gets touches and turns 50% over. Uh, 50% of his touches over, I assume. He's a true spastic. Thank God I can watch Steve-O highlights tonight. Um, look, I don't fully agree with the Aaron Hall opinion. Um, I think Aaron Hall has been pretty solid in the VFL um, for not playing any games and this being his first game. That was the team's worst performance of the year by a mile and he got subjected to that. I'm not saying Aaron Hall is amazing, but... We know he's better than that, but you're only a product of your teammates around you. Uh, Jesse Stevenson, we are not as exciting to watch as we were in the first two games. Time to bring in our secret weapon, Jacob Edwards. Um, if anyone here remembered Jacob Edwards is on our list, fantastic job. You're a real North fan. Um, Jacob Edwards clearly is not good enough. Uh, he barely does anything in the VFL, but hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. Um and you're right. I don't know what happened to those first two performances of the year. Whatever we did, Clarko must have, I don't know, ripped that uh, playbook up and he's burnt that and that's now down in hell. So who knows? Justin Smith, Stevenson, Combin and Paul Curtis, the only positives. Terrible performance. Absolutely. It's hard to tell what the issues are. I agree. It's hard to understand because there's so much that's bad. It's bad in so many areas at the moment, defensively, going forward, and when the ball turns over. Hopefully, Clarko and co. can work it out. The only thing we've got is in Clarko we trust. That's all we can cling to right now. Um, Alexander McNair. McNair? Sorry, mate. How has started to make up for a really poor start to the season? Yeah, to be fair, I thought How was fine. I mean, he was just, you know, part of the team today. Um, didn't do anything really wrong, didn't do anything right, but then then again, no one in the team did. Um, yeah, it seems we abandoned the game plan we had for the first two weeks in favour of bombing it long and praying. Absolutely. Uh, George Brown, time to bring in Edwards. Another Edwards shout. Here we go. <laughs> maybe. I mean, please don't, but maybe. Uh, Cillian Davey, shameful. Yeah, that's all you need to say. Uh, Jeff Robinson, we have been poor for a couple of years now. Correct. Regardless of the first two rounds, we are still a bottom four side. We all, yeah, we all know this. Yeah. Did we get ahead of ourselves? I think we may have. And we are miles away. Poor decisions and skills, uh, skill errors leading to turnovers. Um, go with the territory. Yeah, no, for sure. Especially where we are at. But the one thing you can bring despite building and a lack of quality cattle is effort. We saw that in the first four rounds. I agree. Since then, the effort had been poor. No manning up, tackling, chasing and pressure on the ball carrier. It just hasn't been there for the last couple of weeks. We've been very poor two weeks in a row. Couldn't have said it better myself. Matt Hamilton, ho. So, obviously the effort was down at times in this game, which is very disappointing. But I feel as though we should probably uh, lose to Gold Coast by five plus goals on the balance of where the two lists are relative uh, to their development. We have a bottom two list. This is mainly due to the recruiting of the past five-ish seasons. The group is adapting to a new game plan. This takes a lot of time. Yes, you have preseason, but you only get a couple of one, uh, one and a half to two hour sessions per week to work on these tra uh, things at training as well as video session. So this will make uh, this will take a long time. My personal expectation is a five win season with a percentage of seventy. There is where that is where the list is at, and this is should improve year to year. Matt, you might be onto something there. Um, did we get caught up in the Hollywood highlights of the first two rounds? I think we may have. I think this year is going to be one of those ones where let's judge at the end of the year 
and we've just got to ride the wave. Now, last comment on Facebook. Glenn Lavender, uh, thank you for writing in once again. I'd be interested to know if Clarker has thrown more demands at the players in the last two to three weeks with regards to the new game plan. All of a sudden, they seem lost and unsure of who should be where and when. Yeah, I really agree with that. Are they trying to implement something and failing and uh, because of that, the simple stuff they were doing all comes undone and the pressure snowballs? Possibly. I'd love, I'd, I'm very interested to hear Clarkson's press conference. That's all I'll say. I think Clarkson's press conference will be very, very interesting to see if he sugarcoats it, like I feel like he did last week, um, or if he actually gives us an explanation. So thank you to all the Facebook commenters, um, Further North Podcast on Facebook, if you want to get around that. We'll go to the Instagram comments now, uh, at Further North Pod on Instagram. So we've got J underscore Wheezy underscore 84. Goldie deserves better. Absolutely. Soz to gold once again. Uh, Matty Y. Mill, terrible. Stevenson playing better. Cunnington possibly back in form. Yep. We've sort of covered off on those already, but yeah, absolutely. Um, livingcolor.gc, went to the uh, Gold Coast for holidays. Well, no, none of us are going to the Gold Coast now unless we're going there to torch the joint. Uh, Nath underscore Nicholas, flat for Goldie. Also, the boys will be pretty dejected. They didn't have a crack for him. Absolutely. That was our worst game by far. Um, Zane Tormey, as John Kennedy said, weak as piss. Yep, absolutely for that game. Uh, we go, oh, double comment, Nath. Nath underscore Nicholas again. Zebul, our best player, absolute shin boner through and through. And Stevenson. Yep, 100%, mate. He's still our captain, isn't he? Like, has Luke McDonald really been the captain that we thought maybe? I think Jai's a fantastic captain. I think maybe Jai should be the solo captain. I know this is kind of off the cuff here, but my gut is telling me that Josh should be captain. McDonald, I like him. He's a good player. He's had some good games this year, and I do think he's a leader, but co-captain thing, I'm still not on it. Um, Brody.Sposato, I honestly can't. I just can't wait for round nine to be able to boo Jason on Francis the Snake. Couldn't agree more. I'll be down there. I'll be booing. He deserves everything he cops. Um Nick Vargas.mp4. Larky struggling. Thoughts on Mackay impact? Curtis was good. Uh, yeah, I think we sort of covered uh, thoughts. the thoughts on Mackay. I think he looked disinterested. He had a couple of moments where he competed, but he just looks dejected. And I hope he's not halfway out the door. His words say that he's close to a contract renewal with North, but his actions suggest that he's not involved and he's halfway out. So... TBA on that one, I don't know what to make of that. Um, T.Thomas6. Goldie, great. Steve-O played well. Couldn't agree more. Those were two of one of the only shining lights we had. Um, Bod his stringer. Bod his stringer? Sorry, mate. I apologize. Um, Common competes hard. Yep, couldn't agree more with that. Defensive structure is horrible. If Larky is hurt, don't play him. I didn't think Larky looked too bad. This game, he took a couple of marks and should have kicked uh, an extra goal. Um, we don't have other options as well. Like, I, I'm going to bring, bring Callum Coleman-Jones into this team. I'm not saying he's going to change everything, but we need to change something in this forward line. Um, is Larky still hurt? He wouldn't be playing if he's hurt, I guess, but who knows. Liam Watto. So many players in the 22 are fortunate to be in an AFL side. It is looking more and more like that to be honest. Um, I think we need to get really, really strict and really ruthless with our selection. I'm wanting five plus changes next week. I'm not going to lie. And we got the D's too, I think. So, wow, that's going to be awful. Uh, Bassy Green 94 Cunners has looked uh, proactive and highly competitive. Yep, 100%. Best player on the day. Ben underscore Chaney, disgraceful. Couldn't have summed it up better myself. Uh, James underscore Trotter 99 uh, has left a couple of comments here. The game ending was a positive. Goldie deserved better. True champion. 100% man. Uh, my nan could play better than Turner. I couldn't agree more as well. Thank you for your comments, guys. Uh, I, I love being able to share your thoughts. Um, I know as a fan, um, 
you know, you sort of want your voice heard or you want to get your opinion out, especially after these games. It's a good venting sesh. So hopefully you guys typing the comments on Facebook and Instagram and me reading them out helps you vent that frustration. So, yeah, let's stick with the team. Um, anyone who gets their comment in a bit late, I'm sorry. Um, I, I only had about an hour after the game. So there will be a preview podcast for next week as long as my mental health hasn't gone in the bin after this performance. So please get your comments in then. Um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. And look, the podcast has actually been doing really, really well. I really appreciate you guys tuning in every week, sharing it with your mates um, and building this thing up. And once again, I'll reiterate, we are trying to do a bit of a fan meetup for the podcast and for uh, close to a flag before the Saints game. We're going to do a live podcast. Uh, we're going to try and get you guys to come on the podcast and you can give your opinions then. Um, more details to come. We'll give it all when we know it all. But yeah, just keep that in your calendars for before the St. Kilda game. Um, all right, let's see. Five-star reviews, Apple and Spotify. So if you leave a five-star review, I will read it out every week. So we've got two this week. Um, awesome content, five stars from Brent Harvey is a gun 29. I think more podcast hosts should take tea sipping breaks. Love your work. Keep it up. Go north. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I definitely would feel better right now if I had a cup of tea. Um, thank you for listening to that awful podcast, a preview podcast I did. Oh, sorry, the podcast last week. Um, I was crook as a dog and that tea actually got me through it. So thank you very much. Um, love the podcast five stars from Joseph Baines. Very great podcast. Love listening to a podcast that I agree with. Go Kangas. Thank you, Joseph. Um, I'm glad... Uh, that I can vent everyone's frustrations for them and talk about all the things we love about North Melbourne. Because look, let's let's try and end this podcast on this. L we need to trust the process here, okay? If we end up by the end of the year, we got two wins, right? If we finish on five or six wins, if we can scrape a few more wins through the end of the year, that's still a massive improvement. Do we need to retain players? Absolutely, and I'm worried about that, but... Clarkson is here and it's not a one-year thing. So I'm trying not to overreact. It's poor today. Let's put this one in the bin and it it all depends how we come out next week. We're not expecting a win against the Ds, but like the Blues, let's see if we put up a fight. All right, now we're going to do a quick round review. Um, obviously, the round has now finished with our awful game. Now, my, my tips that I did in the preview pod um, – some of them weren't great. But anyway, so we've got the Bulldogs winning over the Dockers. The Dockers look awful, don't they? I think we play them twice, so thank God. Maybe that'll get us another win. Um, yeah, come on, Eagles. You really need to knock off those pretenders. Port Adelaide win by 40 points. Um, yuck. I don't want to talk about Port Adelaide. Gross. GWS lost to the Brisbane Lions. Brisbane sort of just cruising now. They're looking like a fantastic team. Um this is the one I got horribly wrong. I was adamant the Swans were beating the Cats. I do still stand by saying it was disrespectful to put the Cats as favourites over the Swans. But, um, yeah, that doesn't look good on me now. Geelong by nearly 100 points. The, the Cats look back. Um, I always thought they'd get back into the finals, though. Um, this was an interesting one. The Crows and the Hawks. The Crows by three points. The Hawks are seem to be doing what I wish we were doing right now, just competing with anybody. Um, the Crows had a massive win the week before. I'm not thinking, I'm not on the Crows train yet. Um, a Hawthorne decent or the Crows not as decent? Who knows yet? That's That confuses me. The Saints, when the Saints go marching in, the Saints are real. Um, I think the Saints are real. Maybe not premiership real, but like, Top eight, maybe top four real. How weird is that to say? Um, yep, skip past our game. I don't want to look at that. And uh, yeah, okay, we've got Monday game, the uh, the Melbourne versus the Richmond uh, for Anzac Day Eve. Don't know why it's an Anzac Day Eve game. Feels weird, but whatever. Um, I think the Ds will win this one. I'm not confident in that though because they were a bit poor last week. Um, but I don't rate Richmond super highly either. So I think the D's will win, but it could go either way. Um, and then the big one, Collingwood Essendon, what a massive game this has turned out to be. Um, 
if the Pies are premiership, want to be premiership favourites, they need to win this one. Um, I think it's a free hit for the Bombers. If they don't win and they compete, they're still having a great season. If they win, wow, everyone on the Bombers train. I know we hate the Bombers and I'm never be on the Bombers train, but we shouldn't have fired Brad Scott. <laughs> that feels so weird to say. Anyway, they're my sort of tips and review uh, just for that round. We only do that quickly. I don't really care about the other teams. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's the podcast for the week, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's harder to consume North Melbourne content when they're losing. I know um, for I'm an Arsenal fan in the Premier League and the last three weeks or three games has been hard for me to listen to all my favourite Gunners podcasts and whatnot and for other sports. So um, if you have listened all the way through this and you're sticking with it, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Um, and, yeah, it's all about how we come out next week and if this team is going to improve – they're going to come out and fight next week. So let's judge them on that performance. Clarko, you need to get back in the lab. And let's see how they come out next week, guys. Let's brush this one off, get some sleep, have a cup of tea. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the preview podcast for the D's game. Yay. Fantastic. I'm pumped. Anyway, thank you so much again, guys. Love you to bits. Have a good night. I'll suck, but I love them. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Further North podcast. We'll be back next week with more great North chat. See you then, Bruce fans.